Hello everyone, my name is Sanjay Maguda. I work as software architect in APK team. Uh, so in this session, we will be explaining WS2 API management platform for Kubernetes and why we wanted to invent something like that and uh, some of the interesting features we are having and uh, how it natively fits in Kubernetes architecture. So to start with, let's imagine trying to make all parts of the big machine work together smoothly. Basically, that is what API do for software. But inside the Kubernetes, sometimes it can be uh, quite complicated. It can be like a puzzle where you try to fit different pieces together that are not fitting perfectly. Uh, so without proper way to uh, manage these APIs, these systems can get messy sometimes. You might have to have issues like uh, sometimes uh, not knowing who's using what, uh, how softwares are working, and uh, when APIs are not working, you cannot get it that information. So there can be situations like that. So in the world of software, when we use Kubernetes to run things, and APIs are like the secret source uh, that makes sure everything works together very well. But without proper API management tool to handle these things, sometimes things can get uh, messy or confusing. So if, we, if I start with the explaining uh, traditional or old API management solutions uh, which were designed pre-Kubernetes era, uh, there can be some issues with them. So some examples including uh, compatibility issues, stability limitations, integration complications, and things like that. So they were designed for different era, not really for the Kubernetes era. So these uh, configuration-related dependencies, infrastructure-related issues, and uh, containerization related issues can cause to some issues when we run these systems in Kubernetes. So this mismatch can cause to complicated migrations and sometimes drop performance and your overall API management performance might drop. So, uh, so if I discuss further about traditional solutions, uh, they often struggle to grasp uh, Kubernetes uh, concepts. Uh, so if I start with some example, uh, there can be namespace concepts, ingress, egress concept. So this kind of concepts uh, really uh, doesn't mean anything for uh, this kind of all systems. So as a result, these systems cannot work seamlessly uh, within the Kubernetes architecture. And also in Kubernetes ecosystem, everything treated as a custom resources. So these custom resources are the way to configure Kubernetes architecture. And these custom resources are there for a specific tasks. So developers who are familiar with the Kubernetes concept mostly like to work with custom resources, uh, basically CRs. So it's very important to support that architecture. In next segment, we will be exploring how WSO2 API platform for Kubernetes tackle these traditional problems that we were discussing. So we started API management related development way back in 2010. Over the last few years, uh, we have served uh, hundreds of customers and we have done thousands of deployments all around the world. So we use that wealth of experience to start uh, WSO2 API platform for Kubernetes. So basically, uh, when we designed these things, we adapted microservices architecture, which is uh, specifically tailored to native Kubernetes architecture. And also we use uh, full Kubernetes features. And uh, our main goal was to provide a best solution for uh, Kubernetes environment by using uh, latest uh, Envoy gateway implementations, and also adhering to Kubernetes API gateway specification and other industry common frameworks and platforms and also specifications. So embracing microservice architecture was a key decision uh, when we start this product, uh, which allows you to you know, deploy a different component of the APK solution in a distributed way so that you can scale them, you can deploy them, you can manage them independently. So these are like uh, some of the design decisions that we took during the APK design part. Let's uh, go further into uh, different key features we have in WSO2 APK. So to start with, we'll start with the comprehensive API lifecycle support. So WSO2 API platform for Kubernetes is not just a gateway. It's a complete API management solution which address complete lifecycle of your API from design to development to testing to uh, until retirement phase. Uh, we manage almost all the things. And also it's uh, APK designed for the cloud native architecture. Basically, uh, it can run, it can decide, it's designed to run on uh, cloud architectures, basically cloud-centric systems, and uh, this architecture allows you to scale it into uh, cloud scale. And also, uh, we need to discuss about the flexibility and portability. So WS2 APK, uh, basically, uh, we can run it on the different 
uh, versions of the Kubernetes and also uh, within different uh, cloud uh, Kubernetes providers as well. And like I said, Dell, it's a Kubernetes optimized decision. So basically, it can understand namespaces, services, uh, cluster boundaries, those concepts very well. And it can coexist within that system very well. And uh, microservice architecture, again, uh, which allows us to uh, design, deploy, and uh, develop, and uh, also release, uh, and scale these systems separately uh, without depending on other parts of the system. Next, we will discuss about uh, deployment aspect of APK. Uh, so WSO2 APK designed to deploy in cloud native architectures. Uh, and uh, scalability is a very important factor when we consider uh, this kind of cloud architecture. Uh, so when you consider scaling part, there are two main reasons we need to scale this kind of systems. So number one is uh, how you get API request. So let's say you are getting 1,000 of requests, all of a sudden you get 10,000 API request. How you should scale the system? Another side of the thing is how you scale system for different resources. So basically you have 10 APIs today and in two years you may have 10,000 APIs. So how you scale for system for that kind of requirement. So in WS3 APK, we have architecture support uh, both these uh, deployment side of the things. Uh, so basically uh, when you have like large number of API request, uh, you can configure something like horizontal pod to scale in Kubernetes environment to scale the system. And also, when you have large number of APIs, you can easily use, use our uh, API gateway partitioning concept to uh, deploy large number of API within the system. Uh, so, then like I said earlier, uh, APK designed to run as a microservice architecture. Uh, so, that allows us to uh, scale these things uh, independently uh, without depending on uh, other components. Next, I will explain a little bit about the WSO2 APK's open source support as well as uh, different specification and compliance supports we are having. So if I start with the Kubernetes API Gateway specification, uh, it's a robust foundation for APIs to adhere Kubernetes API Gateway specification. So uh, with this specification, it defines uh, different concepts like uh, a gateway, gateway class, HTTP route. Likewise, there are different co concepts. And with this specification, almost all the gateway providers uh, trying to adhere this specification have some kind of a common configuration or common framework for gateways. So WSO2 APK adheres to that as well. And in addition to that, uh, we are using Onnoy as our gateway. So Onnoy is again a very powerful uh, performance optimized gateway. So we use that for the uh, implementation of the gateway. And again, like all other WSO2 software, WSO2 APK is also 100% uh, open source. So that means we release uh, this uh, software source code and the Apache 2 license, which means you can customize it, use it as you want. So next we will uh, explore how you can uh, work with WSO2 APK and uh, whether you should uh, contribute to WSO2 APK. If you have any design ideas, design suggestions for APK, how you can contribute back. So I would like to encourage all the developers and engineers out there to participate this journey. Uh, basically, uh, if you want to have a deep understand about WSO2 APK, uh, best place is to go WSO2 APK documentation. Uh, so here we have uh, linked WSO2 APK documentation as well. And apart from that, we have very active uh, support on uh, other channels as well. So for example, if you have a specific question related to development or design or something like that, uh, you can initiate that discussion in uh, our Git repository. Uh, so our, all the design and the discussion, all these things happen in open way. Uh, you can raise uh, the tissue and uh, share your feedback. And also apart from that, we have Discord channel. It's again active. Uh, our team members are continuously monitoring Discord channel. So if you have any questions, you can ask these questions there as well. WSO2 APK is an open source project. And uh, I would like to invite you all to uh, try out this product and uh, use it. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, Please share with us. Thank you very much.